Welcome to the Content Matters Podcast, where digital content and marketing pros talk shop. Tech may be changing fast, but great content is timeless. Get inside tips, trends, and practical know-how from the top minds in the digital content industry. Sponsored by Ingenix, the uniquely agile content management platform. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Content Matters Podcast, sponsored by Ingenix. I am your host, Barb. And I would really like to welcome Anne Hanley to the show. Anne is, as everyone knows, the um, Chief Content Officer of Marketing Profs. And she obviously is a digital marketing and content expert. She is the best-selling author of the Wall Street Journal's um, Everybody Writes, which I have, by the way, and I have loved it. And I could say Everybody Knows Anne. So you could put, probably could have changed your book title to Everybody Knows Anne and She Knows How to Write. Uh, we are so fortunate to have her today here today to join us, and um, she's going to talk about the importance of storytelling, of knowing your audience, and how to find the right voice to speak with them. So welcome, Anne. I really appreciate your being with us today. Thank you so much, Barb. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. Um, so let's let's start by going back. And when I was thinking of this, I was thinking, let's go back 10 years. I'm thinking, well, we don't really even have to go back that far. Let's go back five or six years ago when content marketing was really just kind of getting serious attention, at least from my perspective, that's when it kind of started. What, what were marketers telling you? Did they think that it was just some kind of fad or did they really see the potential in it? Huh. Um, yeah, that's a great question. I'm not sure that marketers as a group felt one way in a, in a unified sense, I think that they're, you know, like with any new marketing trends, um, and by the way, I, I don't think that content marketing is anything new. I think it's been around for a very long time. It's just that the, the tools have gotten a lot more advanced. The technology kind of has, has caught up with it. And so rather than it just being like content marketing, just being print or, or just being, um, you know, sort of put in a certain box. Now it's, as I see it, sort of the backbone of marketing. So when we talk about, you know, modern, when we talk about content marketing in a modern sense, I think what we're like, as you said, like the past five plus years, um, I think what we're really talking about is just the modern inception of content marketing, right? The sort of modern adoption of it. So, right. All that to say, um, you know, I think five years ago, I mean, my book, Content Rules, came out almost 10 years ago, which is incredible. Uh, content Marketing World, which I would consider the, the premier content marketing event internationally, um, I think this year is its ninth year. Uh, marketing Pros and the Content Marketing Institute has been doing a content marketing study looking at the state of content marketing for, I think this is our geez, our 10th year, something crazy like that. So, um, you know, I, I feel that all these little signs have helped marketers embrace the idea that content is very much a cornerstone of modern marketing and that it's nothing new. It's just that the tools have changed. There have always been, you know, industries or people or businesses who are lacking and who are, are laggards, I guess, and who it, it has taken them a while to understand the importance of good content to marketing a business. Um, but I, I also think that there's people who have been, you know, embracing it right from day one. I think, um, I know I've seen some of the stories from coming out of the Content Marketing Institute, like um, the John Deere, I think it was, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and the, oh, the drink guys. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm forgetting their name. <laughs> but, um, the stories and the of what they've been able to do with content and creating audiences and doing stuff it's just been amazing to hear and 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 makes you think that everybody should do it but do you think that it's the right thing for everybody like is it the right way or are marketers still trying to figure out is this the approach i need to take to kind of reach my target audience and customers yeah, I mean, the way that I think about content marketing is that I don't, I don't think it's a tactic. I don't think it's one thing that you do that it's not one tool that you have in your marketing uh, arsenal, I guess. Um, instead, I, I think of content as infusing almost everything you do. Um, you know, content is is what you're doing when you're on social media. <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, it's this is content. This podcast yeah. is content. Yeah. Uh, 
it's you know it's a webinar it's um anything that you publish or produce that to tell your story and by your story i mean why you exist what value do you bring to your audience to your customers and how do you do it differently than anybody else that's really the genesis of your story and so content is anything that you do to to tell that story um and so I think of content much more holistically. I don't think of it, as I said, like just as a tool or a tactic. I think it's what we all do as we're interacting with customers. I sometimes show this slide on stage and it's a, it's a scene from The Lion King. And if this, was a, if this was a video versus an audio podcast, I could show you the picture, but it's, um, it's a picture of, um, of like Simba, the, the little lion cub with his dad looking, Mufasa looking at the, looking at the kingdom and the light underneath it is everything the light touches is content, <laughs> you know? And that's exactly how I feel about content because anything your customer comes into contact with that you are publishing or producing, that's content. Absolutely, I agree with you 100%. And I think, that mo I think most brands are there and definitely understand it. So let's kind of talk about this importance of storytelling then because there's content and there's a lot of ways you can create content, but then there's really the way you want to approach it is this idea of storytelling. But how do you define storytelling in, in B2B marketing? So storytelling in B2B marketing to me, as I, as I mentioned a second ago, is really just about uh, who you are as a business, what value you provide to others, and how you approach your business. You know, how is it that you are delivering the services that you deliver? That sounds a little vague and nebulous, I know, but it's all of those touch points that make up your story. So if you were to articulate it, you know, who are you? Why do you exist? What value do you deliver? Um, and then how is it that what you do or say or, or, um, or you know, wh how is it that what you are giving the world is, is different than anybody else. That's just the genesis, genesis of your story there. Um, I think sometimes businesses get caught up in this notion of storytelling, like, oh, what is it? But essentially what it means is reframing your business in the context of why it matters to your customer. That's really the, the genesis, that's really the, the, the rub right there. Right. And so there's some, there's some, I've heard, you know, kind of some, some words lately that, you know, we shouldn't work, focus on storytelling because it makes customers think it's entertainment and that's not what it's not. It's not what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess yeah. it's not the right way to look at it. Yeah. I mean, I, that's my, that's always been my problem with the word storytelling too, because it does sound like a fairy tale, right? It sounds like, um, like something like a story that you'd read to your kids at night. You know, it sounds like something that as you, to use your word, that sounds like entertainment, but essentially when we talk about storytelling in a business context, that's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about, you know, fairy tales or things that aren't true. We're instead just, describing what it is that we do in the context of our customers. So as I talk about a lot, you know, make the customer the hero of your story. Talk about what it is that you do in the context of them. You know, how do you shoulder their burdens? How do you ease their pain? And that's, that's a great way to approach your story, especially for B2B companies. So if, if that's what it is, which really sounds very straightforward, why, why is there still a struggle to kind of get it right with some companies? I think... So many of us in marketing and so many of us in business still really love to talk about ourselves, right? We love to talk about our products and our services. And I get it. I mean, I run a business. I'm excited about what we do. I love to talk about it. But the reality is, is that we live in a super busy world. We are all bombarded with messages all the time. And it's too easy to block out the kind of messaging around you know, what your company does. No one cares. But what they do care about is what does it do for them? And that's the way that I, that, that's the shift. It's subtle and it's kind of marketing 101, but it's something that a lot of, of marketers, a lot of businesses still miss. Um, I talk to marketers all the time. I look at marketing all the time and, you know, I love marketing, but I very often still see marketing that looks like marketing as my friend Tom Fishburne would say. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's, you know, it's still very much about the company. It's not about the customer. Okay. So 
what is the best approach then to kickstart a storytelling strategy? Um, I, I know that knowing your audience is the first step, but mm -hmm. that seems to be the place where most, uh, most struggle defining the right audience. And then at the same time, is the audience the customer? Because the audience is not always the customer. Maybe it's an influencer who can help you win a customer. Like, so how, how do you kind of get going there? Well, first of all, um, I mean, I think with any marketing program, it's always great to, you know, as you say, to think about who is this for. Um, sometimes, as you say, it could be for prospects, it could be for existing customers, or it could be, as you suggest, influencers. So you want to reach influencers to reach their audience. So it's your audience's audience. Um, or it could be uh, like sales, for example, right? If, if you're team in marketing or your your role in marketing is to support a sales function, then maybe your customer, so to speak, is sales, right? So it's going to vary depending on on the, the role that you have or, or what your objectives are. So, you know, the first thing is to really understand not just who you sell to, but really who your customer, and I'm using like air quotes right now, um, is for any particular piece of content. Um, and I think this is especially true in, in B2B, where, you know, very often we are supporting sales who's out talking to customers. And so um, just really thinking through the, the goal of any piece of content, any piece of any kind of, of marketing campaign or any marketing that you're doing. Okay. So um, with, with that in mind, and you've kind of figured out your audience, there's a voice that kind of goes with that. Do you like, there's a brand voice and that's who you are and that should be who your audiences are at the same time, kind of how I look at it. But do you change your voice based on who you're trying to reach? Like how do, how do you kind of figure that out? Yeah, I don't think you do change your voice. I think your, your brand voice is your, is your voice and it should be consistent across everything. But what I think changes is your tone. So your tone is, you know, if you were to think about the way that you speak, for example, like the way that I'm talking to you right now, Barb, like I don't know you super well, but if you were my daughter <laughs> and I would be, you know, my voice would be different, right? It would be yeah. a little more intimate, a little warmer, a little bit more mob-like, right? <laughs> and yeah. so, um, so I think that's the, that's the difference in tone. Like what I say, my point of view, my perspective, the words that I use, like none of that changes because that's my that's my brand voice, so to speak, right? That's my voice, but my tone will change. And so that matters if you are in marketing, for example, and you are writing your FAQs. So people who come to FAQs may be a little frustrated because they have a customer service question or they have a customer service challenge or issue of some kind. And so it's really about putting yourself in the mindset of the customer and thinking through how is my customer feeling when they come to this page and then how can I adjust my tone to to speak to them directly in a way that will resonate with them. So your tone will be very different on Twitter or Instagram as it will as it might be on your own website, on your FAQs when you're trying to be helpful and empathetic to what the customer is struggling with. Okay. That that makes sense. So same voice, just you just adjust your tone slightly. Yeah. Yes. The audiences. Okay. So with um when you're building content and doing kind of a storytelling strategy, the website is going to be a key component of that. At least it is today. There's some talk that maybe the website might not be such a strategic component of the digital experience. How, how do you kind of, how, do, how does a brand apply storytelling to a website? Like, because most websites today, they're both the product, right? They're, you know, here's my products. Yeah, I, there's a little bit of customer talk there, but it's mostly here's my products are my resources like how do you adjust that and apply storytelling there i mean i think a very simple way to think about the story that you're telling and the and the way that you're describing yourself in the context of your customer is just to do something super simple count the number of views on your web pages how many times are you talking to the customer or the prospect? How many times are you making it about them and not making it about yourself? So that sounds so basic, right? <laughs> but 
try it sometime. You know, I, I, if you go to a like a B two B website, for example, or or a website that sells solutions or technology or any of those things, um, look for the number of views. How many times are they? And Y O U is what I'm is what I mean by use, right? So yeah. How are how are they bringing me into their world? Like, how are they describing themselves in the context of what I need? That is just one very simple way of bringing the customer into your world and making your website, your your product pages, more about them and less about you. Which again is sort of the fundamental of a fu fundamental advantage, I think, of thinking of a story driven strategy. Very much like um, Randy Frisch from Uberflip talks about building a content experience mm -hmm. as opposed to just listing a product with a bunch of features and stuff. Yes, exactly. Okay. Um, I love Randy Frisch, by the way. So do I. I interviewed him for his, I loved his book. I thought his book was fantastic. I told him I had a million tabs marked off in his book. <laughs> such a good guy. Yeah, and such a nice person, too. A quick pause to say thank you to Ingenix, the Content Matters sponsor. Ingenix is a leading provider of agile content management solutions. You can check them out at Ingenix.com. I read your newsletter, the Total Anarchy newsletter, which I love, and I love just to read it, um, other than the fact that you provide a lot of great resources in it. I just love to read your writing. It's just so so user friendly, which is kind of a silly term to say, but oh, thank you. <laughs> it, feel, it feels like you're just speaking to me, which I, that's what I assume everyone else probably thinks as well. But in in that one newsletter in June, you you talked about you mentioned Mary Meeker's internet report and the quote from Instagram co-founder Kevin Systrom on the lack of value in writing today, mm -hmm. and content is so much more than just text-based writing it is you know images it's video it's audio like do you think that people are thinking well there's so many blogs today let's just start doing podcasts and not think so much on text-based content like but but it's all equally important do, do you look at it that way um i don't think of i don't think of text as a like, I don't think it's a binary choice, right? I don't think that we're either writers or we're, or we're photographers. I don't think we're either podcasters or we're, or we're graphic artists, right? I don't think if it's, I don't think it's a binary choice. I think that writing is the backbone of, of so much that we as creators, as marketers do. There's an awful lot of writing in marketing. And that's not just how, um, that's not just in, maybe how we're how we're framing writing in general like I'm, I'm not talking just about blog posts and books and ebooks and white papers not just about that but i mean there is you know we're writing every single day almost all day long we're writing emails we're writing um linkedin updates we're writing articles for ceos if we're doing you know any sort of thought leadership kind of work i mean there's so much that goes into there's so much writing that goes into our roles and i don't think that's going away just because you know, Instagram is exploding, and just because you know there are there are more there's more and more video out there, um, I guess I don't see it as a binary choice, and that's really what I reacted to, you know, with with Kevin's comments um, in the Mary Meeker report, because you know, to me, an Instagram post, like just break it down to that, just you know, boil it down to that kind of simplicity. An Instagram post is great. I love Instagram; it's my favorite social media platform by far, but. An Instagram post is a whole lot stronger when you marry it with some amazing text, with some great writing, when you describe what's going on, when you have voice and personality. And this is true whether you're an individual or whether you're a brand. So, you know, to me, it's it's not a binary choice. You know, you don't need one or the other. You need both. I also think that in writing, you can convey a kind of nuance that's um, that's that's hard to do in, in, in any other medium. I mean, I, and of course I say this as a writer, so yes, I'm totally biased, but I think that the world needs, you know, more depth. We don't need more scrolling. <laughs> and so I will just, you know, I'll just fight that till I'm dead. Basically <laughs> is how I feel about it. It's in, I, I, I agree with you 100% as someone who primarily what I write all the time, but um, mm -hmm. is it also, do you think it's, um, we were getting too much caught up in, the medium as someone said to me and not just you know you want to create content how you create that or what form that takes 
is a matter of who your audience is and how they want to consume your what you're trying to tell them. Yes, and also what you have the resources and the ability to publish as well. You know, um, I was talking to a company this week and the, I got a question from, from the audience. It was an internal meeting. I got a question from somebody in the audience who said, um, you know, what do you think about, about voice? You know, like Alexa and Google Home and that kind of thing. Like what, sh what should we be doing there in terms of making sure that we're, that we're, um, that we're, you know, embracing voice as a tactic, as a technology. This came from somebody who works for a company who has a terrible online presence. You know, <laughs> you know, their blog is terrible. Their email newsletter is awful. I signed up for it and it was just the worst. And so, you know, it's a matter of you don't want to be an innovator in that space until you really get the basics right, right, until you are very much clear with what your story is, who you're communicating with, and you're telling that story in a way that's that's compelling, right? So don't worry about all these emerging technologies about innovating in, in a way until you're really ready to embrace that, you know? So all that to say, I think a lot of it has to do with your capabilities as a company and your resources that you have and your focus. Focus is so important. Um, I think a lot of marketers just kind of need to slow down a little bit and and you know, really focus on what is it that's truly going to drive results for us as a company and as a business. We're always getting too excited with the next big technology that's on the cusp of becoming out, just because there's so much of it out there. Yeah, and I get it. It's like I love to dabble too. I think it's totally, it's great to do that. But to you know, try to come, to try to show up consistently in new areas without tremendous resources, it's that's a really hard thing for most companies to execute on. Right. Okay. So um, how do you measure content? How do you know if it's doing what you need it to do? Um, is, it, is it driving results? I mean, what are your goals for the content that you are producing? Is it to, um, you know, are, are you trying to advance people down the so-called funnel? Are you hoping to get people to sign up for your, to download a white paper, to sign up for your email newsletter? Um, you know, what is your, what is your goal? So it's kind of hard to measure the effectiveness of content until you, until you map it to a specific goal. Um, my friend Avinash Kashik, who I think is just brilliant with, um, with analytics, he works at Google. He talks about having a buddy goal. So for example, with any piece of content that, or any piece of marketing really that you're, that you're putting out there. So say that you're trying to drive, um, uh, you're trying to, to grow your, your email list. Like that's the goal of a piece of content. I love the way that Avinash says that each goal should have a buddy goal because otherwise it's a little, it's, it's too um, risky to over index on one goal and to ignore users and to ignore the user experience. So for example, if you were to match, um, you know, each one of your goals with a lesser buddy goal or, or a companion buddy goal, um, you may find that that's a far more effective way to to market and it sort of keeps it keeps us honest in a way right so you're not forcing people to sign up for things just because your one goal is conversion right um so that kind of thing so i i love the idea of really being very smart and intentional about how you're thinking about what your kpis are what are, what are your actual goals for anything the key is just you need to be measuring something you need to know not just put content out there in any form, but you need to know that it's, it is doing what you need it to do. So you need to measure something, right? Yeah, of course. Yep. Okay. Are you working on a new book? <laughs> uh, yeah, let me see how to answer that. Yes and no. <laughs> Nothing I'm ready to talk about just yet. Uh, but, um, but yes, always. I have a few ideas floating in my brain right now. And a few sure. kind of half written um, proposals, I guess. Yeah. Well, we, I look forward to whatever comes and <laughs> Thank I'm, you. A, I'm a subscriber to marketing profs and just the, the amount of stuff that you learn from the, from marketing profs, from you, from other, um, you know, content marketers in, in the, in the industry is just, everybody can just up their, up their level a hundred times just by listening and taking all that advice into hand. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So thank you very much, Anne, for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Barb. And thank you everyone else for, for I was going to say for attending, for coming today. I really appreciate it. Uh, make sure that if, um, 
you can catch the podcast on Apple iTunes, Apple Podcasts, I guess it is called now. And we're on Anchor. And you can go to ingenious.com. We have a whole podcast section where you can listen to this podcast and all the other ones. Have a great day, everyone. 